Hi there and welcome to Lorena's Labyrinth. My name's Anna Pirelli. The comments that you see here are my views, beliefs, opinions, and sometimes they are not even my fully formed views, beliefs, and opinions. However, they are my understandings. Please do retain an open mind and reflect on any of the content and your comfort levels. If your views differ, please feel free to leave a comment. Also remember, it is possible to disagree in respectful ways. My way is not necessarily your way and vice versa. You might also find that some of the content on this playlist um, in regard to spiritual or universal laws, it resonates with you, meaning it feels right to you, while other laws may not feel right or they may not feel comfortable. If this is the case, the information is either not right for you or it is not right for you right now, and it might never be right for you at any given time. It really doesn't matter. As an earthy and practical person, I can put my hand up with all honesty and say that I have at different times had the same feelings about some of the content in here. And with some of them, I still have a level of scepticism uh, within my viewpoints, but I choose to retain an open mind about the things that I don't fully understand for a few reasons. Firstly, because I believe it would be supreme arrogance to think that we all know all of the answers while we have a body. Um, and because what is right for one of us is not necessarily right or suitable for all of us and I choose to respect the differences. Please do leave your uh, opinions, beliefs, uh, feel free to argue the points in a respectful way um, with any of the content on the slides and even my interpretations and if you feel that you can add clarity around some of the content we would all love to see it. Thank you. For now though let's explore the laws. All creation is governed by law. The principles that operate in the outer universe, discoverable by scientists, are called natural laws. But there are subtler laws that rule the hidden spiritual planes and the inner realm of consciousness. Contained within these laws, or conditions, is the true nature of matter. Knowledge of these laws has an effect upon the mental urges. Mind is the builder. Stay in full mindfulness of the application of universal law as related to self and to others, and know that in love all life is given, in love all things move. In giving one attains, in giving one acquires, in giving, love becomes the fulfillment of desire, guided and directed in the ways that bring the more perfect knowledge of self as related to the universal, all-powerful, all-guiding all divine influence in life. Love is life. When we go back, merge with the God Source, in some infinitesimal but profound way, we expand the mind of God. Our higher self always points the best and most perfect way and it is ours to listen and choose or reject what we hear. It does not blame, but patiently tries again to show the perfect way, the loving way. All of creation pushes forth. We are ever becoming. Identity ever remains. Universal Law Number 87, The Law of Sex. This is the term applied to the force which brings about the physical merging of the two poles in connection with the animal kingdom and of man, viewing him as responsive to the call of his slash her animal nature. It concerns itself with the due guarding of the form in this particular cycle and its perpetuation. It is only powerful during the period of the duality of the sexes and their separation and, in the case of man, will be offset by a higher expression of the law when man is again androgynous. Right, so fairly obviously, in the first instance, when we take a glance at this law, we're talking about procreation of the species. Now, putting it into perspective, every animal life form on the species has a male and female. So it's talking about um, polarities of gender for the purposes of procreation. Um, however, I find it interesting too that this law references the fact that base nature, which is our animal instinct, of procreating only has power while there is a duality and it makes reference to the idea of androgyny. So I suspect this might be a little bit confusing so I'll break it down to what I believe it refers to. Um, when we are 
you know, if we talk about male and female and polarities, we're also talking about masculine and feminine. And every single one of us has um, an, a masculine and a feminine um, aspect within us. Um, because that's part of being a balanced human being and it's how we choose to live our life that determines whether or not our feminine or masculine attributes are at the fore. So let me just expand on this a little bit more because I'm just trying to think how to deliver it. Um, they're talking about what I believe is where we have these gender defined roles and bearing in mind that these were written at a time when um, gender defined roles were really at the fore. I mean, to some extent they're still there, to some extent it's still problematic and it depends on the culture that you're within, where there's an expectation if you're a woman, you will do X and Y, and if you're a man, you're going to do X and Y, you're going to look a certain way and you're going to behave a certain way. Now, we might turn around and say, oh yeah, but that's not the case in the 21st century because of, um, you know, because we're more evolved or whatever. But I think when push comes to shove and you come down to it, these roles, these gender defined roles still are, still are quite applicable within modern society. But what happens is as we mature and evolve into our own personalities, then we're um, able to incorporate more of a balance. You know what I mean? Um, well, I say, you know what I mean, that's a terrible thing to say. But basically, you can have a woman who is extremely feminine, but who is completely and utterly um, independent. So when I say feminine, I mean feminine in appearance. She may look as girly as they come, but when you have a conversation with her, she is completely practical, very earthy, ambitious, a career woman, uh, financially secure and all the rest of it. So within that context, she's got what is referred to as highly masculinized um, personality traits. Now, if you don't understand this, I do recommend that you go and research the feng shui symbol um, yin and yang, because this is what we're referring to. Now, equally, um, because I guess we're more evolved now as well, you will see more women of that type, and you're going to see more men who actually are quite masculine by appearance, but who are far more sensitive and caring, perhaps, than yesteryear they may be more hands-on when it comes to looking after children and domestic chores so they're stepping away both of these descriptions that i've given they're stepping away from these typically gender-based um, roles now when i reach these conclusions about how i interpret it if we do a google of what the word androgynous means. You know, you can check out the definition. And I think I looked at uh, Miriam Webster for this definition. And there's about four different meanings. So I, I actually believe that the meaning that's applied to this law is the one where the traditional male and female roles are obscured or reversed, okay? And that makes complete sense to me within um, the context of the way this law is applied. So what I also see with this is, and what I believe um, it refers to, is not necessarily that um, that sex is no longer something that people don't seek or that they lose all their sexual urges or sexual desires as they do this gender obscuring, if you like, if they step outside of their traditional roles. What I believe and interpret, it's a natural part of actually maturity where as we age and mature, we get to that point where it's no longer about um, the base urges. If we're seeking partnership and compatibility with a person, we recognize that actually the base urges and this desire to procreate um, doesn't really have a lot of relevance and I guess as a, as a person gets older as well is then uh, certainly once they reach a, an age or stage where they can you know the woman can no longer conceive or whatever you know this desire to pro procreate has got absolutely no relevance to their life it's about um, the intimacy and the connection of having a relationship with a person so it's gone beyond the base chakra and it's now more about the heart and a meeting of mind, heart, spirit. Now, I'm just going to throw something at you because this is something I considered many years ago um, when I was reflecting on 
how it is that some intimate relationships, some marriages last and some don't make the distance and they uh, people split up, they divorce, they go their separate paths. And what I concluded, and you may or may not agree with this and feel free to pop up a comment, was I actually reached that point where I thought, you know what, in an ideal world, when a, a couple marries or they decide to commit to each other, I think initially, uh, certainly if they marry when they're young, depending on culture, okay, culture is going to play a part in this, but within the Western culture, they meet and they connect because they find each other physically attractive. That's the first bit. So we're talking about this base, animal-based nature. They're finding an attractive partner that they would like to at least go through the motions with, if not create a child. And ideally, they grow together. So if I was to put this into perspective, I've got an uncle, and in fact, actually my parents too, they're still married after about 60 odd years. Um, they marry because they're initially attracted to each other. They have children and then they grow and develop together. Now, ideally, it's a matter of growing through the chakras as well, you know, to that meeting of mind and connecting and that solidifies the relationship into dotage, you may as well say. So anyway, that was just my thoughts. Sometimes I don't think that I think sometimes people do get together on base connections and they either are completely separate as far as thinking goes and sometimes you know that song two out of three ain't bad sometimes it is a meeting of the base chakra and a meeting of the heart chakra there is that care and love but they're just not on the same page and they're just not going to grow together on the same page so there's not that connection on the um, crown chakra if you like and so um, those marriages might not go the distance sometimes they do though i've seen it happen where they do so anyway i think i'm just speculating there interested in hearing your viewpoints i come back to this law refers to the fact that as we grow and mature and we get a balance within our own individual auras we no longer feel the um yearning burning desire to have another half to complement us we don't if we're if we're highly feminized, then we're not looking after our practical earthly things, right? Then if you've got a guy who is all work, no play, and not in touch with his emotions, then he's going to have a balanced person that is highly feminized. But in a perfect world, both parties have a balance of the feminine and masculine within them. I don't know, did I make that clear? If you've got a question, pop it up. Thanks very much. Have a good one. I'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye for now.